This is a story about home, our home. It's a story about the city of Canning and our larger home planet Earth. It's a story about what we need to understand and how it works in order to live a good life now and into the future. Let's start at the beginning. Here in our solar system, we've got this great planet called Earth. On it, we have all these great things like trees and birds and beaches, waves, butterflies, kangaroos, sheep, and our favourite of all, people. Like all other forms of life, people need certain things to survive. Over time, we've got very efficient at getting these things. Well, some of us have. We want more than just survival. We want to thrive, to live a good life on planet Earth and here in the city of Canning. Research done by a Chilean economist named Manfred Max Neef shows that in order to really thrive, human beings need more than just survival basics. He spent years exploring the question of what it takes to live a good life on planet Earth. What he discovered was that regardless of where you live, the culture you're in, or the time in history you're experiencing, we all need nine basic things to live well. Subsistence, we need to eat, we need water. Protection, a roof over your head, a safe country to live in. Participation, being able to have your say in how things that affect you are decided. Idleness, having some downtime, lying on the beach, fishing. Affection, we need a hug, we need a smile. Understanding, learning. Creation, might be writing or drawing or painting. Identity, we need to belong, we need to self-express. And freedom, we need to have a choice in how we live our lives. What's interesting about Max Neef's research is that it differentiates between a human need and the things we do to satisfy that need. Needs and satisfiers are not the same thing. For example, if the human need is subsistence, the satisfier is food. If the need is affection, the satisfier might be a hug. If the need is understanding, the satisfier might be professional development training. These nine human needs are constant across all cultures. But the satisfiers, the ways we satisfy our needs, change and are different in different places. For example, the way Wajak Nyunga people living here 250 years ago satisfied their needs for subsistence or participation is not the way we do it here today. In the past, humans would trade actual things to get their basic needs met. These were the first economies. Nowadays, most people on Earth use money to purchase things they believe will meet their needs. But it's interesting to notice that not one of the nine fundamental human needs is money. You can't eat, drink or sleep under money to keep you warm and dry. You can't get a great hug from money or have a really great laugh with it. But it can buy you food to eat, a bed to sleep in, entrance to a movie or a guitar. Money has become a convenient tool to allow things and services to move between people as they try to meet some of their fundamental needs. What has remained constant is that the basis of the economy is our natural environment. We use the natural resources of our planet to meet our fundamental human needs. This suggests a link between having enough healthy resources, i.e. a healthy planet, and our ability to have a good life. It suggests a challenge to meet our needs without wrecking the home we depend upon. How do we do that? Before moving on, let's take a recap of what we've learnt so far. All human beings have nine fundamental human needs. The way we meet these needs, it's called a satisfier. We all satisfy needs in different ways. And human beings ultimately depend upon the natural environment to meet their needs. If we have to be able to meet our needs without wrecking planet Earth, we need to understand its operating system, the rules by which the game of life is played. Let's think of our planet Earth as a spaceship. Its energy source is the sun, and nothing except this energy enters. Nothing leaves except infrared radiation. Well, occasionally, we get a few meteor bits that crash into Earth, and we send spaceships up that might not come down. But we can call that negligible, and altogether we have what we call a closed system for matter. Energy flows in from the sun, and plants use this energy to create stuff we can use, via the process of photosynthesis. What is waste for plants is a resource for animals, and vice versa. It's a dependable cycle that has underpinned life on Earth for millennia. 
All of this happens on the only part of the Earth that we can actually live on. This is called the biosphere. On the scale of the Earth, the biosphere is the thickness of the skin of an onion. Under this fragile living zone, we have the Earth's crust. We couldn't live there. In the past, there's been very little movement of materials from the Earth's crust into the biosphere and vice versa. A few volcanoes might bring up minerals and erosion and plate tectonics over time will return them to the crust. This system has worked well for millions of years and is the natural system that all living things have to work within. So how do the ways in which we meet our needs affect this operating system? Turns out there are a few key rules we're breaking. Firstly, we're taking substances from the Earth's crust and releasing them into our biosphere so fast that they're increasing at rates never seen before. Secondly, we're creating substances that are difficult for nature to break down and releasing them into our biosphere so fast that they are increasing at rates never seen before. And thirdly, we are physically degrading the natural ecosystems that we use to meet our needs so they are less able to provide the things we need. This includes not only things like wood for guitars, but larger processes like water filtration and climate regulation. In turn, this means that we're undermining each other's ability to meet our needs. In order to address these four issues, at the City of Canning, we've based our sustainability policy on these four principles. Our policy asks that when making decisions or planning for the future, all officers at the City of Canning work towards reducing and eventually eliminating 1. Fossil fuel dependence and wasteful use of scarce metals and minerals. 2. Reliance upon persistent chemicals and wasteful use of synthetic substances. 3. Encroachment upon nature, for example, land, water, wildlife, bushland, soil, ecosystems. And 4. Conditions that systematically undermine people's ability to meet their basic human needs. At the City of Canning, how are we doing this? Here are some examples. To reduce our fossil fuel use, we've put a geothermal bore at Cannington Leisureplex and are putting a second one at Riverton Leisureplex. We're putting more solar panels on council buildings and solar hot water in sporting change rooms. We're also working on energy efficiency measures throughout council buildings. To encourage staff to use more sustainable transport alternatives, we've got council bikes, corporate smart riders, and we're in the process of purchasing a green pool car fleet. To reduce our use of toxic and persistent chemicals, we've changed the way we manage mosquitoes to use substances that nature can break down more easily. And we've stopped fertilising some of our key river foreshores to reduce the onflow to our river systems. To reduce our encroachment upon nature, we're creating a framework to encourage urban infill in the city and reduce urban sprawl. We govern the waste disposal of our industrial areas to reduce pollution into our waterways. We work to protect, maintain and expand our natural conservation areas and we do a lot of wetland restoration, which improves water quality and provides habitat for native wildlife. We also rescue a lot of our natural wildlife, such as snakes and birds. To help people meet their fundamental human needs, we provide a lot of aged care, disability support and youth services. We are working on keeping costs to our facilities low to keep them accessible for all. We engage with our community on decisions that affect them and we work towards delivering their needs through the Strategic Community Plan. We provide community events and educational workshops. Many of our open spaces will have signage that teaches people about our local history, our local culture and our environment. We make people's living spaces better by monitoring noise, pests and pollution. So these are some of the things we're currently doing to work towards a more sustainable canning. Now that you understand too, we can do a lot more together. How can you use these principles in your life, in your work? Do whatever you can. To learn more about sustainability, you can click on some of the links below or email us.